welcome everybody to Rochambeau. For those not familiar with the game, Adam, Edouard, Ian, and Michal. Adam from New York, all the way in New York, the Big Apple, Edouard in Suisse. Ian in, from his chateau in France. And Michal in Dubai, in the hometown. Welcome again. Rochambeau, the game. We're going to play it okay, together. Uh, the game Paper, Scissor, Rock. For those who are not familiar with Rochambeau, Rochambeau, if you always wondered what is uh, the official name of, if you've ever wondered, I don't know why you would have wondered this, but if you've ever wondered what is Paper, Scissor, Rock, officially called, it's actually called Rochambeau. And you all know I what paper scissors never rock wondered is. that, but now I know. <laughs> and, and I have never wondered that, and I only learned that thanks to this panel. Okay, well, it's, it's always a, a learning experience. This is to me. We're you happy can't to delay the inevitable, Ian. She's coming for us. Yes, you're going to learn that whether you like it or not, and we force you to learn that. So, <laughs> You too, okay? Uh, now we're going to divide it. In, I'm going to ask a question. But I'm gonna first say, for example, Ad and Misha. Okay, you're the two partners. Okay, you're gonna be split in partners slash folks. So uh, you will be battling each other. Whoever loses has to answer the question. And Ed, wow, and Ian, you are in two, two partners. Marriage, we'll think of this as a marriage, okay? So Edouard and Ian, are in a marriage of Rochambeau back. And Ad, you are in a marriage of Rochambeau battles. You get it? So you're going to play against each other. Not, like Adam will not play against Edouard. Shah will not play against you. You two will fight each other with your Now, as long as I'm with Michal, I'm fine. But I'm hearing, I'm getting a lot of feedback here. So I'm having questions, understanding exactly what's going on. Okay, tell me. What's your question? Oh, no, no. I'm getting a little feedback here. So it's hard for me to hear you. But I'm saying that so oh. Edward and Ian are a team. Yes. And they that means that I've got, so I've got Michelle. So we're going to yes. win. That's what you're saying. No, okay. no, That's all no. I need to know. Adam, no. You're not going to win. You will, I mean, you will fight against Michal. Okay. Oh, wait, I have to fight him? You'll fight, yes, you'll with your with your you'll do rock, paper, scissors on in front yes, of the camera. Mishal will do it, so I'll say Adam and Mishal, it's your turn. Rock, paper, scissors, and then you both and shoot, and then you both have to quickly put your fist in front of the camera and choose, but you can't cheat. Can't wait for the other person to see what he does. Got it. Okay. I see you. Literally. So you just have to put your fists in front. Now say rock, paper, scissors, shoot. When I say shoot, put your 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 schwa. Okay. Your choice. And then you will uh, whoever loses has to answer the question. Gotcha. Okay. Ian and Edouard, that lesson was also for you. Are you gonna make me repeat it? Now, is, 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 Ed, is Edward doing a, some kind of marketing campaign to make sure the camera's on his logo and watch rather than his face? Yeah, stay in the middle, Ed. You're so handsome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so incredible. Is it upside down? Okay, Edouard, I can't defend you there, to be very honest. So. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes just, it it's just a setup we have. I'm sorry. Should I should I, I change it? No, you're perfect. You no, no we admire it. We like it. We want marketing. You know, in I action. can change the brand. I can put something else. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, uh, that uh, is, is beautiful. <laughs> you've made one of the you've made one of the most beautiful watches ever that most people don't know about. The the pocket watch that was uh, uh, that um, uh, um, opened uh, as a wristwatch. Yes, agreed. Like, wait, I did what? It, it's it's a, a, a originally a pocket watch that you made as a wrist the watch. Heritage. Yes, it's 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 the one of the most beautiful watches I I, I have, and it's 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 gorgeous. Michelle, flattery will get you nowhere. You so much you got your um, campaign right there. When I, I'm just telling you, it, it, there are some that. watches that stand out. <laughs> this is one of them. Thank you very much. 
So now this uh, Rochambeau panel has succeeded marketing injection for Moser. Ding! Okay, now let us begin. <laughs> Let's begin. Okay, the first question. Now we'll first go with Adam and Michelle. We'll begin. I like going uh, clockwise. Let's go clockwise. Okay, papers, scissors, rock, shoot. Yay. Oh, okay, we shall beat Adam. Adam, you lost. What? So now you must right. answer the question, okay? Yeah, Michelle, I'm going to remember this. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to read you a statement, okay, Adam? And you oh, are going to oh, tell oh. me what you think of that statement. Do uh -uh. ADs, authorized dealers, do AD, uh, ADs conspire? with the gray market just to make more money because they can't increase prices of certain models? I would say no, and here's why. I think that no, there's no, the whole- say oh. what you think of that. I actually added in the do, but you have to say, what, you, what do you think of this statement? I, I don't think it's true. Uh, I don't. I know plenty of ADs and you know, their hearts are in the right place, but a lot of the times they're stuck between a rock and a piece of paper. Um, see how I did that? But it's actually a rock in a hard place. Uh, they get saddled with inventory that they can't move because that's the only way that they can maintain their relationship with the brand. And it, what it becomes is it's, a, it's by necessity. So that they have to find a way to move these pieces in order to save a little bit of money you know, to preserve their investment and continue to get the pieces they want. So I don't think it's something that's intentional, but I think it's a byproduct of the way that the system is set up. And uh, and I actually do really believe that. I'm not just trying to kiss, you know, some booty just so that I can stay on some lists and stuff like that. But but, that, but maybe that is true also. But, uh, but that's, that's how I feel about that. I could be wrong. Nice save. So you will still get that Rolex. Okay. Yes. Daytona, okay. here it comes. <clears throat> Next, Edward and Ian. Okay, it's not the same question. So don't think that you were able to prepare yourselves and I don't know what, whoever. No, no, I'm bouncing around here. So, papers, <laughs> scissors, rock, shoot. Uh oh. Ah, Ian beat Edwald. He just, he just smashed your scissors with his rock. I know. Look, now we're getting the half face again. I only want half your face because too much of your face is too handsome and I can't handle it. <laughs> All okay. right, go on, sorry. Let's begin. Edward. Are you picking the question based on who lost? <laughs> no, I'm going yeah, with you, my <laughs> Are you choosing your question right now? No, no. Yeah. Well, Edward, I need to like, don't cramp my flow. Okay. okay. Now you're interfering with my thought process. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, okay. So, Edward, have you, yeah. okay, have you ever been wrong about something you Googled and what and someone you Googled? Who? Well, I'm, yeah, yeah for, for sure, but uh, here Someone? out of the blue? Yeah. I'm saying I Googled that I was wrong with. I don't know. I mean, my, my kids are asking me questions every day, right? Like you judge. Most of them, I don't know what, to what I mean to so say most is. So most of them, I'm like, oh, something. what? Sorry? I mean, what, what, I'm, what the question is saying is, did you judge something by Googling it? Do you get it? And then you found out, you discovered you were wrong. Someone and something. And then when you, like, you judged it as per Google, and then you realized, you found out in your life, you're like, oh, no, I was wrong. Like, I misjudged. Like, you used Google to judge something, and then you found out in your yeah, life. I got that. I, I, got, I got that. But frankly, to come up with a... Yeah, I'm sure. It, it, of course, it happened. I mean, and someone like yourself, if you ever Googled yourself and you're like, I mean, oh. Googling, Googling, I, I Googled somebody and I judged that person. And then I realized by knowing the person that I was wrong. That's what you yes. mean. Yes. And something. It's okay. You can say that you Googled me 
and then you thought that I was a complete tool, and then you realize that I'm awesome. And I, it's, uh, we've had this conversation. Okay. That yeah. The reason that, that happened to <laughs> that happened to me all the time. No, I, I frankly, um, yeah, I, do I Google pe people? You have to say who. Yeah, I know, but I need to to find I, uh, I'll someone take this that recently. For you. Sorry. Just pretend it's me. I'll take the bullet for you. I'll be the guy. <laughs> How could you say that about me? It could be a journalist, by the way, Edouard. It could be anyone. It could be a celebrity. Yeah, no, but I got that, uh, Dominique. It's just it's difficult to. Uh, I mean, I don't Google usually people that much, so I don't know um, when I did that recently or uh, that I can remember. Let me give me a second to think. Um, so, and and please don't pass the question to me because I'm in the same position. <laughs> I'm sure I've done it, but I've got, I cannot remember any names. I can remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, Google I, them. I keep a spreadsheet. <laughs> to, to be on, honest, I use, I use Google. I mean, I don't know if I, that answers your, your question, Dominic, but uh, I think... I, I mean, I'm very, you know, I, I just put my, my logo up there and I use Google usually to Google our brand and find out what people are talking about. And to be honest, many times I thought, oh, you know, we're getting a lot of visibility and people know the brand. And I realized that nobody knows Moser. And uh, so I think it, it, a, a, this by me being linked to the brand and looking, I, I, I think I get the misperception of the reality because... I'm being fed with, with you know, um, articles or posts linked to, to my brand, and I think that's, that disturbs the reality. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm very wrong in sometimes thinking, oh, I think we achieved, and we, I, I believe we're way uh, ahead of what we are in, in, in reality because I'm just looking into a small tunnel there. In terms of people, um, and that's my brand, but now in terms of, of, of people, who did I uh, Google? I don't know. I, um, I'm frankly, I'm very sorry. I don't, I don't. Sadiqi fam, when you Googled them and then met them in real life. What Who is says saying? fam for family? You, just, you mean family or fam? I heard the term fam. Family. Ian, I do. I'm hip. Okay. Or any other retailer. Ian loves to judge. Don't deflect Ian from the situ from the question at hand here. Uh, honestly, Mo I mean, Mo there's a lot. I can't answer it because <laughs> you didn't lose yet. But you know what, Ian, I think there's a lot of people you Google. You think they're you know they're big big brands, or I mean, yeah, sometimes maybe I, I Google some of our partners and thinking they they're big, so very difficult to um, to approach them. But when you meet them in reality, it's it's very diff different. The, the Sediki, I know them for for many years, so I don't I don't have to uh, to Google them. But I guess uh, I don't know if uh, some other of our um, uh, partners, retailers, or maybe some other CEOs. I mean, big CEOs of big brands. Sometimes you feel like you know because they're flying up there much above us, you feel they they're going to be difficult to uh, to reach. And in reality, um, it's very different. I, I had the chance last week we were, we were, I mean, maybe I can use that example. Last week we were um, sponsors of Entrepreneur of the Year in Switzerland. And one of the, the one gentleman who won was um, Daniel Borel. He's the founder of Logitech. And uh, he's oh. a Swiss entrepreneur's, you know, amazing gentleman. And I, I, I knew up front who was winning. So I Googled and looked at a little bit of his background. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, Companies on the on the Nasdaq must be somebody who really fly up there, and we happened to be sitting next to, to each other. And I felt I was talking to a completely normal guy. We went to the same school, uh, of course. He's a few years older, but um, very generous, very open, asking a lot of questions. Try to to get to know to know uh, what we're doing and and who we are, and not self centered. And I find it very uh, very humbling. So now, you know, you see, so you answered the question. You answered it now. 
Yeah, but you give us not so much time to answer, uh, Dominique. That's so uh, you know, you have to be on your feet. You have to cut all the, the, the bullshit in between that, you you know, until we get to the answer. If all your <laughs> That's questions, what's fun. Gonna, That's the fun part. Yeah. We can't cut that out. Yes, you cannot. Okay, now okay. I'm getting warmer. It's okay. Yes, okay. yes. Now you're warmed up and you now you see that we're not messing around. You know, you're used to like the easy questions. I, I noticed that we're not messing with you now. We're serious. I noticed there's no way out. That's the problem. Exactly. No, I catch you by the tail and I will not let you out of it. So, here we go. Adam and Mishan. Okay? Are you guys ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Paper, scissor, rock, shoot. Ah, oh, Adam, Mishan. Woo. Okay, Mishan. Yes. Okay. And by the way, you guys are aware that we've chosen questions based on the past three panels. So this one is derived from the, the means to the end of the world, the environmentally conscientious panel we had about the environment, okay? So, if you were given the chance, Michal, to save the world's future, would you live as a monk the rest of your life? Your friends and your family don't have to, just you. Would I live as a monk? As a monk, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, like a monk life. No electricity. Yeah. No I, 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 I like listening to that. my voice, but if I'm the only audience that I have and I'm and no one else to talk to, your I family and friends get to live normally. Your family and friends get to live as they are now, but you have to live as a monk, and you will save the world's uh, future by doing this. Uh, no, is, sorry. Is I'm, I'm, a, I'm selfish. I'm, I'm more than happy to see the end of the world if that means I have to live with um, with other people. No, no, I'm sorry. I won't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I want to be, uh, you know, okay, part and parcel of saying uh, living as a monk, if I have my watch collections and I can connect with the internet and can buy more watches, I, okay, I might think about that one. No, uh, seven your ISP, wife and your children like get to live as they are, and you have to live without any of it. With nothing? Nothing. Uh, and your family, your wife gets. No, to sorry. Live. I'm sorry. Uh, um, um, I'm sorry. Really? The world will have to. The world will have to come to an end anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm going okay. to help move it faster. Thank you very much, Mishra. Okay. Now the next round. Next question. Okay. Now let's go, Ian and Mishan, uh, Ian and Edouard. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> Paper, scissors, <laughs> rock, shoot. Ian, uh, <laughs> Ian, oh scissors. Okay, scissors. So Did I Ian, so Ian, you are now in the hot seat. Oh, good. Okay. Are you listening? I am listening. Okay. What is worse, being a servant or a serpent? And why? And what are you? And what are you? Sorry. Ooh. Yeah. What is worse, being a servant or a serpent? And what are you? Serpent. I think I'd rather be a serpent than a servant. Why? Oh. Well, if you're the one directing things rather than just doing what you're told, that sounds like a better life to me. So you would be rather be deciding to ruin a brand so another brand could succeed? And um, so on. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't feel that it's always someone has to lose for someone to win. Are you I sure about be a good servant? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think so too, Ian. I think you'd be a good servant as well. I, I, I'd, I'd be, I'd be helping. I'd be helping everybody. And if it looked like someone was going to fall, I'd probably give them a bite just to put them out of their misery. But generally, <laughs> I, I think I'd be a good servant. You're good like that, Ian. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. We'll do it. All right. 
Well noted, Ian. You're a kind serpent. Okay. You're very noble, noble and gracious. Now, Adam and Mishael again. Paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Ah, Adam beat Mishael again. Okay, Mishael. <laughs> By the face. way, Dominic, before you ask the question, is it a coincidence that uh, Adam and myself, because we have beards, are competing against one another, and Ian and Edward don't have beards and are competing against one another? I'm just curious. I would like to say, yeah, I wish okay. I could have, but to be no, very honest, that that's a very beautiful coincidence. You just happen to be to the left on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shoot. And wild on the, you know, the other side. So that's it's literally a visual thing. But you know what? I'm just gonna say it's the beards versus the non beardies. Okay. So the beardies versus the non beardies. Fair enough. Okay. Mishal. Yes. <laughs> Explain, please. Possible reasons why retailers could be to blame for rotten product. And why corruption slash nepotism put them in that position? I'm, I'm sorry, I cut off. Uh, uh, retailers are responsible for? Explain possible reasons why retailers could be to blame for rotten product and why corruption slash nepotism could put them in that position. Uh, well, I'm glad I won that one. <laughs> I, honestly, no, it's all you, buddy. No idea. Uh, I, I, I have. It's, it's very unusual for me to be dumbfounded, but the question dumbfounded me. I, I don't know why a, a retailer would sell rotten products or cause a product to be um, uh, bad. Um, it, it would go against their own self uh, uh, preservation. So, uh, so I, I don't know. So you and, don't. By the way. It's unusual for me to say I don't know. Ah, so well, there's a first time for everything. So you don't yes. think retailers are ever to blame for rotten products? I, I, again, I, I'd, I'd find it very strange because the whole purpose of a retailer is to try to sell you whatever they have. Why would they want to sell you something rotten? Because you wouldn't come back to them. Um, Sometimes you're stuck with that. Even if you're, even if you're, uh, um, I, I agree. Even sometimes in case when you're stuck with something, um, the, the question is, in a, in a case of a retailer that wants to stay there for a long time and have sustainability as a, as a business, would I be mad enough to sell you something which then you'd go around talking badly about, saying this is the company that sold me this, this product? Enough. I find this very strange. I can see the chateau. No, because right. yes, I can too. Because the second part of the question is, do does corruption and nepotism? play a part in that so maybe you're having uh, company uh, uh, production, production as in from the from the uh, oem uh, the original uh, equipment maker that maybe they they had to take on a brand because of nepotism slash corruption like oh no no you have to sell this because inside like it's um, demon. that's what we need. Uh, if 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 um if we went back to the 1970s I'd say that would be a fair statement because the watch, uh, the, the watches that came out in the 70s were hideous and horrible. So, so there was no design thought. It was just ugly watches. That were uh, sorry, not all of them, but a lot of them were ugly watches, and they were one-offs. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I don't even know now why people want to buy the set vintage 70s. I mean, some of them are <laughs> hideous. Um, uh, but how would nepotism come to play? I don't know. I, in this case, I, I really would not answer that. Because the watch industry is a very family-oriented, like the hotel industries. That it might be, but again, I think uh, uh, because of the competitive nature of watches and because you're either massively huge or a very um, uh, boutique watch uh, maker, you can't afford to have, uh, uh, just because he, he or she happens to be a family member, you can't afford to have them run the show because they run it into the ground. Um, we've there are there have been examples of that, and uh, I mean um, I, don't, I don't know if I can mention a brand that comes to mind um, because uh, they try to do it, um, and I'm not going to mention their name. 
um, uh, and it quickly became evident to them that they're not good enough for it because the, the market immediately rejected what they were producing. And you can see that the market rejected what they were producing because when you go to the second hand uh, or auctions, no one wants to buy the watch and the prices have tumbled tremendously. A, a lot of watches, uh, uh, um, there, are, there are certain mystique about certain watches that keep, uh, keep that watch in circulation. Uh, whether it's in second, uh, and whether it's uh, second hand or whether it's uh, auction, after it comes out the first time. Uh, but some of these watches, and, and again, I can think of a few ones from my head. Uh, there, there's no chance in hell, and and so therefore, the, why would I? Uh, why would I want to promote such an idea? Is is beyond me. I, I think in 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 such a world where if you are not up to scratch. And everyone can see what you're doing, uh, now courtesy of the, uh, whether it's the social media, whether it's uh, newspapers, magazines, any of these things where you're seeing your competitor coming up with something better and stronger and more exciting for, the, for your uh, for potential customers. I, I'd be nuts to put in somebody who, just because he happens to be my brother, my sister, my uncle, my aunt, my aunt whatever the case may be, um, to f fill a job, would eventually kill my brand. I, I wouldn't do it. Not necessarily, um, okay. No, now I understand what you mean. Okay, okay. No, thank you, Misha'al. Now, Edward and Ian. Next. Paper. Get ready. Shoot. Ah, Edward beat Ian. Again. Ian, there you go. You have 30 seconds to pitch why Apple Watch should count as part of your watch collection. Go. So, sorry, sorry, let me repeat the question. 30 seconds to pitch. You have 30 seconds to pitch why Apple Watch should count as part of your watch collection. For inspiration. <laughs> There you go. Inspiration. <laughs> and I don't have to wear a Fitbit. It's it's a, it's a good. Uh, it, it, it'll measure my heart. It'll measure my heart rate. Um, they're not too expensive unless I buy the gold one. And what? Why not? It, it, in fact, I am. I am a bit of an Apple fanboy. But so why should not have an Apple Watch? Though? Like it should be part. Of it have, be, you're trying I to have, your yeah. way out of answering the question. You're trying to slither your way out of it. No. no I, sorry. Why it, should okay, be, thirty it, seconds. Everybody, everybody, every watch collector should have at least one, if not five, <laughs> Apple Watches in their collection, and replace them, and replace them every year. Because it's the only way your children will think you are in the 21st century. Uh, uh, Ian, by any chance, do you have any Apple shares? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, no. That's good. Uh, Ian, that was actually really on point. Impressive. And you, and you can make them, and, and sorry, and you can make them look like mechanical watches as well, can't you? Yes. I believe you can. The, yeah, the yeah, I mean, it, it's win-win. Dial face of that. Okay, now. I, I, would say, I would say, Dom, I would say, yeah. don't it's just it's add as good an as Apple Watch GMT. to your collection. Re yeah. Don't just add an Apple Watch to collection. Replace your collection with an Apple Watch. Wow, you're really doubling down ah. here. Aren't you? <laughs> You know, you were fine before, but you literally yeah, you just, you just kept going. You just kept clear. going with it. You know what? You're clear now. Like, he literally, uh, okay. Yeah, I was, yeah, okay. We'll put, it, we'll put a pin in that now. We'll Glad just I didn't get that one. Okay. Paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Ah, Misha, I'll be Adam. Nice. Okay, good. Adam, I think you'll enjoy this. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It never ended well. Do you delete negative comments on social media or keep them 
And can you give us an example of the worst one or the like latest bad one that comes to mind? Okay, first of all, on principle, I, I do not delete anything uh, on social media. I figure that uh, it's there for perpetuity. And, and let's be honest, I'm not always right as much as I like to think I am. I usually am. Most of the time I'm right. Like 99.9% .9 of the time I'm right. And therefore, I would leave the comment up as a testament to the idiocy of the commenter so that people can come there in perpetuity and just go, wow, look at this tool. He just, you know, he went up against uh, an unstoppable force and he got crushed. And maybe they think, oh, you know, at least he, he tried to fight the good fight. But at the end of the day, usually the juggernaut that is me is going to, you know, just completely take control. I'm trying to think of some things. I do have a certain political bent sometimes with my post. So obviously I'm going to attract a certain uh, individual. And again, I'll leave that up. But I'm trying to think of what was something recently that somebody said to me about a watch. You know, it was probably, um, uh, I, I'm very fond of, of uh, digital watches, of course. I've never had an issue with those because I grew up in uh, the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, as a child, that was what was cool. And uh, one watch that I was very excited about was when Hamilton revived uh, the, did the reissue of the Pulsar P2. And people aren't aware, the Pulsar P2 was the world's first mass-produced LED digital watch. And, um, and it may, actually made its debut in a James Bond film. Therefore, it's cool no matter what. But this, this trend of watches was very short-lived. They used a lot of power. You had to press a button in order to see the time. And so they were quickly phased out by LCD watches. But, uh, but I, I own an original uh, Pulsar P2. So when Hamilton came out with the reissue... Uh, I had to be on board with that. And so I bought one of those and I posted a lot. And so I have gotten some pretty derogatory comments and, oh, well, you know, Adam, you're, you know, this mechanical watchmaking and your group supports that. And you write about mechanical watches. How can you uh, talk about this watch? And I think somebody was like, you know, it's the worst of the disco era. The watch sucks and, and therefore you suck. And so I think I think I've taken a lot of heat for my love of that watch. But um, but I'll leave all the comments up. I mean, if you name the worst word. one, quote one, Pardon? quote one, word for word. I I, I can't. I, I mean, let me see if I can go back here. I have to. What's your feeling? I have to. One that really said genuinely hurt your feeling. But you kept it up because you out of principle. But it genuinely hurt your feeling. Well, nothing ever hurts my feelings because I'm an unfeeling monster. That's what my wife tells me. So, so it's difficult for that that to happen to crack that facade. I'll be honest with you. Nothing online. And I know this sounds like a cop out. Nothing online hurts my feelings because everybody is is the bravest, most noble warrior when they're hiding behind their keyboard. They're all going to say things that they would never say to your face. And the only people who can really insult me would be my mother, because you know she's my mom because I'm actually scared of her. And maybe my kids a little bit because I want them to like me, even though that's not my job. I always tell them I'm not here if you like me. You just have to listen to me and respect me. You can hate me. Um, nothing, nothing really offends me. I've been through stuff. <laughs> you know, okay. I don't know. So the Iron Man. Or no the rock sorry but well the it's rock. not that it's it's just that honestly like uh, unless you're, you're you're paying my salary and feeding my family like what do i care say whatever you want and most and nine times out of ten and i i stand by this and i think this applies to a lot of people anybody on the internet who's talking smack to me if we meet in person probably going to be friends I think that a lot of people get this sort of thing going on, it's antagonistic, whatever, because it's easy to do and you want to feel cool. But when you're confronted with this person and then you realize that you probably have more in common than not. I have some people, honestly, who, who I hated and they hated me and we hated each other. We knew this and, and, and the universe was right because of that. And then we met in person and I'm like, wait, did, did we just become best friends? That just happened? And then it forces you to... <laughs> I honestly, I really believe that the human condition is that we don't want to hate people. It's just the easy route. So even in this industry, there have been people who I have intensely disliked and felt intensely disliked me. And the second we met, we 
it all went away. So creates well, it. Spoken like every high school girl that then meets her nemesis in yes. the post college. Yeah. I'm that high school girl. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That came out, that came out wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know. Okay, let's I'm standing by that. Okay, thank you, Adam. Now, Edouard and Ian. Here we go. We're ready for the next round of Rochambeau. Paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Ah! Edouard, gotcha. and again, Ian. He is like, he can't do anything. You know, anything. Yeah, you were so, like, oh, Ian. Even... Okay, well, no, we have to follow the rules. Okay, Ian. Face. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Would brands survive working with collectors who know nothing about retailing versus an established retailer? Um, it depends how big the brand is. I think for small brands, Working directly with collectors is nearly obligatory. Um, but once you're a bigger brand, while I think it's important for them to stay in touch with their Please, collectors, smaller brands um, need to with I collect just don't think big brands can, can reach enough people to sell enough watches. I think they need retailers. Bigger brands need retailers and smaller brands need collectors. Is that what you said? Is that, is that your answer? Uh, Yes, I think smaller brand and, and by smaller brands, if we're not going to, if we're getting rid of the retailers altogether, I mean, you know, brands that are selling less than 50 watches a year. Um, but what about just directly go? But I, what but about I don't think larger brands can, can reach enough people by themselves. For example, I mean, was when it was a smaller brand, them getting their initial investment from the different retailers in the region, like Sadiqia and uh, yes. Alman, I think, or Kuwait, and Hourglass, like they approached retailers at the beginning. Financing. Yes, and that works, but, 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 I think that, but I think that was because Max Busser had good connection with retailers from his previous business. <coughs> If, Less if you don't have that, you could do. Um, th there have been brands that basically launched like on Kickstarter or, you know, just just doing subscription type watches. Okay. I, I, I think, but I think both methods work for a small for a startup brand. See, I got you there. You didn't think and, that. I and, finally. And, and in, in fact, I would even say, if you're starting up a brand, you're better to avoid retailers at the beginning because it puts a lot of pressure on and it puts pressure on retailers you know to, to sell your watches um I, I think if you're a small startup you're better to start with collectors build a reputation and then hopefully yeah. the retailers will come to you okay okay that's that's fair. that's a good yeah that's a good good policy Okay, a good, a good general rule of thumb. If only the wor world worked that way, as per rules of thumb. Anyways, so next round. Adam All right, I'm ready. Adam. Okay, rock, Calm down, Bishaw. Paper, scissors, rock, shoot. Oh, did I jump? Did I jump the gun there? What do we got? I got Misha, I lost. Um, In your face. I, 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 I beg to differ. I, I actually, as I said, I like hearing my voice. So the more I get to talk, uh, I feel I'm the winner. So I was like, yeah. He's playing the losers, basically. Yes, okay. I am. Well, that's what you like. And I respect question. that. But then you have to like prepare <laughs> yourself for the question that we like fire at you like a style. Okay. So the next question. Okay. Now you ah uh, no okay okay. If the luxury industry jeopardizes 
or scrimps on their packaging for eco-friendly purposes, would it damage or compromise their allure of the whole package experience, of the whole luxury, the whole package of the luxury experience, if they compromise or jeopardize their packaging? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk from my personal experience. I really don't care about the outside packaging. It really doesn't matter because I'm buying the product. And I, they, if they spend more on the product rather than the packaging, so much the better. In fact, uh, there are some companies I want, I would really like to kill them because I keep the boxes, not because I, 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 I'm in love with the boxes. I keep the boxes because then I can keep a value. Unfortunately, the boxes, there seems to be an attachment with it. And they make these yeah. massive boxes. I'm, I'm talking humongous boxes. And I'm going, is this something to do with some type of envy, which I can't mention at this present time? I mean, I, I'm not sure. Why do I'll you it. make such a huge box for such a small product? I, uh, uh, I like a nice sized box because, you know, it's, if, it's a, if it's an expensive watch, you want to say something nice and presentable. Yeah, but a nice sized box, not to too big. Thank Just you very much. Right. Yeah. The, Goldilocks, the, the Goldilocks approach. Uh, but, uh, okay, uh, I would hate if, imagine I'm buying a watch worth $100,000 and I got it in a brown paper bag. Uh, no. You know, <laughs> it, there has to be something in between. Something that, that's appealing. At the end of the day, remember, you're buying something which is supposed to be luxurious. Uh, it has to be something that's appealing, something that's nice, but not that's not, the, not so important. I mean, right now, uh, at least again, I'm, I'm speaking from on behalf of uh, what I've experienced in the um, uh, auction, uh, out, of, out of auctions. You can literally uh, lose money or make money by having the box, uh, a box and papers and all that. If you have that, uh, now even though it doesn't take away from the watch anything or add to the watch anything, but this is what people have come to expect. I want the whole package. But, but please, when, when anyone manufactures watches, again, uh, I don't need it to be made out of uh, gilted. I don't need it to be made out of rare wood. Uh, I don't need... Take that money that you're going to spend on the box and add new movements or new things in the watch, which is what I really want. That's what I've, that's what I've been looking for. Uh, uh, for the last uh, 10 months-ish, nine months, 10 months, We've had the uh, the COVID issue, correct? Yes. H have you yeah. seen how much plastic has gone in face masks and gloves and overalls and that are all plastic? You really think one box is going to make a difference? Well, yeah, because the question was just basically asking about where do you draw the line in terms of do you go all in and save the environment or do you want the luxury experience? Because how do you scrimp on the luxury experience? It's a whole package. So that's what the question was. But your answer was adequate. It was adequate. Adequate. Oh. Within everything, wow. everything within reason. But the key is. It was um, acceptable. Do, do, do I um, when I buy a, when I buy a, a car, uh, when I adequate. buy a house, when I buy something? I mean, I mean, do I really care about the extras that come with it, or sorry, that the uh, wrap around the thing, or do I care about the product itself? The key for me is always going to be the product itself. I'm paying for the product itself. Um, so the, it's better the, the, only with the product in hand. If you'd rather that than any mid-tier package or whatever. Yeah, I think there are two sides to this, though. I think That's you have the, the diehard collectors, and I know that I can speak for people in my group who we're over this. You know, we've got the boxes. Like you said, we just want the product. We want the watch. We don't need the experience. Obviously, nowadays, it's very difficult to go into a boutique and get that whole thing. But I think that very often we get focused on the collector market, what the collectors want. Brands cannot exist if they're just focusing on this narrow niche of collectors. And so the flip side to that is that you've got, you know, the casual buyer, somebody who's got money burning a hole in his pocket and wants to get that watch. And so for them, this is a piece that is is maybe it's a milestone. It's something that's going to signify to other people that they've made it or, or what have you. And therefore they kind of want that experience and go back before COVID they wanted to go into the boutique and they got out the champagne. And they, they gave you a baseball hat and some other tchotchkes to go with it. And you had that whole experience. And then you had this box, which was kind of, sort of, you know, part of the process of opening this. And, but then you've got, it's in my case, and I have to see even though my wife is like standing in the living room. I have a whole room 
at my house in Connecticut that just has watch boxes in it. And like you said, I have to keep them because in case I ever sell a watch, you want the box. And some of these boxes are pretty big and unwieldy. And also, yeah. if she ever goes in there, she'll know exactly how many watches I've bought and how much money I've spent. So this is also <laughs> a problem for me. But, it, uh, but I think that because, um, and look at you, Lisa Nardand, actually just had a concept watch today, high end, made entirely out of recycled materials. That's a selling point now. So maybe you still have the box. Oris was doing the same thing years ago where they had uh, boxes that were made partially out of recycled materials that you can kind of have both. And you're right. A box in the watch industry is not going to save the world. But what it demonstrates is that a brand actually cares a little bit, even. So I think that there's a fine line there. But I personally, I want to that. Give me, the, give me a watch in the paper bag and I'm fine because it also saves me down the road when my wife goes into that room. Um, yeah. And all she sees is a bunch of paper bags. She's like, what are you doing? You're just drinking booze in public and then you leave the bags in the room? That's fine. She's okay with that. <laughs> okay. There, I'm done. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for the sake of your marriage and the environment. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is about me. Let's be honest, all right? Yeah, it's all about me. It's, all about it's me. your world, and we just live in it. Thank okay, you. so uh, now, as well, Ian. There we go. Uh, Ian, are you ready to finally beat? Oh, I'm ready. Life ready to rumble. To beat Edward right now. This is it. The moment we've all been working towards. Okay. Paper, scissor, rock, shoot. Oh. I think he got you again. I think I was too quick. <laughs> I can't. I cannot see what you're doing. I don't see it on the on the. Was ready out of the gate. That. He got you again. What Ian's doing because Ian does have you know dial up, so he's been going slower. Oh no, he's on satellite now. Now he's on satellite. I was being catty because I'm like you know. Okay. I want. I need did to not lose again. No. Yes, you did lose Ian. Now yes, you must. You the piper. Okay. So Ian. What is the most impact? Well, this is an, another environmental one. What is the most impactful thing you've done to help the environment, i.e., to make up for the sins of your profession? Oh. Ooh. I, I have recently put solar panels on a barn. I've got an electric oh. quad. I've got an electric chainsaw that you I win. charge with my solar panels. God damn. Um, <laughs> you burnt us all, Ian. Wow. Wow. Well oh done, sir. Chapeau. Chapeau. You are an inspiration to us all. I don't even have solar panels. Gosh. Okay, and now just I'm, I'm because gonna... I... You got us. You got us. I have a barn full of solar panels. Wow. He's cornering the solar you know, panel market. We, we, we are supplying 50% of Fra France's electricity at the moment. There you well, go. not at the moment because it's there night. Across the sarcasm. <laughs> okay. So, Edouard. Yeah. To, to, uh, contra because uh, I'm the ruler of this game, so I get to... I get to do this. Eduard, you must now uh, elaborate on, you, know, you must now add, answer the question as well. So you won and you lost, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. um, Same question. So what, that, what did I do to... Uh, what is the most impactful the thing? Damage? Uh... Packaging his watches and paper bags. <laughs> his next plan. I mean, we, we we did a lot of small things. I don't know which one is the most in, in, the most impactful, but like we're not giving gifts anymore at events. We are uh, we did a certification to um, all this everything from traceability about all the the materials we 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 using fair trade gold. 
we're compensating for our uh, carbon footprint. Um, you can give plants as gifts. Sorry? You can give plants, little plants, potted plants as well, gifts. We give, we give actually be, on behalf of our guests to any events, we give uh, books to children. So this wow. we support uh, an organization called Room to Read. I think I mentioned Print, it a few printed times. Books, sorry, printed book, printed books. Yeah, because in uh, in the countries we're talking about, it's very difficult to, um, to to bring that on tablets. So, and and as you know, tablets use energy well, and, and servers it. use a lot of energy. So yeah, they are printed. Are very I them myself, so they are printed. Yes. Like there, I was. <laughs> On recycled paper. Okay, on recycled paper. There I was uh, shaming as well, and then he showed nope. me. Right. Like, both of well, them, <laughs> both of you guys. Thank God they didn't ask that question to me and you, okay. Michelle. Oof. Okay, so next question Adam and Michelle. Paper, <clears throat> scissor, rock, shoot. <laughs> um, oh. Adam. Adam, it's your turn. That's cheating. Fine, I'll take it. I like the sound of my own voice too. Let's go. Yeah. I'm ready. Ready. Okay. What do we got? Have you ever been in a quotation marks big mistake by pretty woman situation? Oh, I'm so glad that's you, not me. <laughs> Wait, a pretty woman situation. Okay, first of all, I, let me just preface this by saying I was young and I needed the money. All right, this is not. <laughs> I had a lot of college debt. Oh, by the way, you could be, you could be this in this equation. You could be the sales girl making the mistake, or you could be the pretty woman being able. Oh, to okay. Mistake. I was going entirely you can go different. Through it. Yeah, I was taking this an entirely different way. I was not, you know, forget what I just said. I was, I, that never happened to me. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, you can see where my confusion was. So, uh, so, so you're talking about the like, remember me? I was in here yesterday and you wouldn't serve me? Yes. Big stay. Big yes. Mistake. That, okay. That's a much better, that's much better than where I was going. I was going with like the 80 inches of therapy part. Which, you know what, they're going to stop now. So, let's see. Um, honestly, uh, I have been I have been on the, the pretty woman side. Uh, it, it's it actually, uh, which for me is a big deal. I still don't know how to properly tie a tie. Uh, if it's above 50 degrees outside, I wear flip-flops. So, I don't look like somebody that you really want to pay a lot of attention to an OT. Uh, let's just be honest, I look broke most of the time, and that's not too far off the mark. I do live in New York City, I have two children, I'm not a millionaire, and that pretty much equals broke. But I, I, I save money, and you know, I, I've walked into a few boutiques just to look at stuff, and, and definitely got the hairy eyeball from security, been ignored uh, by the staff. And I will say though, nowadays, it's definitely better. First of all, we live in an era with billionaires, you know, who wear t-shirts, and hoodies. So I think it's difficult for retailers, and it's definitely a mistake for retailers of any stripe to judge a book based on its cover because you really have no idea who it is. And there's also that expression too, I can afford to look like this. So maybe I'm the guy walking down the street in flip flops and a t shirt because I've already made it. I'm beholden to no one. So I'm going to come in here, maybe I am buy that $100,000 watch, or maybe not. You don't know. So I think that retailers have gotten the message, you know, but I will say that in the past, yes, I've definitely been that guy. Um, like what happened? Say, oh, it was uh, just asking to see a watch and being told that, uh, oh, well, are, are you looking to buy today? And say, well, no, I'm not. Well, you know, we can't, we can't bring that out. Whereas I know full well, I've, I've had people bring out minute repeaters for me looking at a, you know, a $6,000 watch. I'm not going to say, where this happened, um, Torno, but uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> but you know, and this is, and I'll be honest with you, you know, one thing I used to do, um, I used to work, uh, you know, in corporate and, and midtown. What I would do is I would take these long lunches 
And uh, I'd meet a friend of mine and we would do like a watch crawl. And so we would stop off at Cellini at the Waldorf Astoria. And then we kind of work our way around and just, just to try watches on. You know, we really were not going to buy anything. Uh, I'll tell you, first of all, Cellini, not that I'm trying to plug these guys or anything, but I would plug them. Didn't matter. Anything you wanted to see, they took it out. They wanted to talk to you because it's building a relationship. The guy today who's an intern or a paralegal at a law firm, the next day he might be a partner. He's going to remember that he had that experience. The smart retailer is going to build that relationship. But Ian, is that dog? You know, Sorry, Adam. Ian, something in the background. I know it's Ian. Is that a how? Do you have a party? Okay, so next question. Edouard and Ian. Dun, 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 dun. Should, should I just answer it? <laughs> this is the second last question. <laughs> oh, sorry. There, two, there's two more questions after this, and then we're done. Okay? So be ready. Edouard and Ian. Paper. Scissors, rock, shoot. Oh, no. No. Finally. Oh. Okay. Done, sir. Edward. There was a big lag, huh? No, there was not. Not no, not from our end in Dubai. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's fine from here. We're good. Okay. Shoot. So you just found out. Your latest launch is made with unethical gold slash and blood diamonds. What do you do? Burn it with fire. I, to be honest, I think I would, um, I would, I would stop it and I would apologize. I think it's really one of the worst thing that of our industry, and I think it's it's. The impact of those things and the way, even I mean, before we we're talking about the packaging, how. Legal, potential legal impact it has. I think dealing with blood diamonds and, uh, and, and materials that potentially when purchasing and dealing with it, you support terrorism and ch uh, child labor, I think has a huge impact. So I think it's, it's really something that I would simply uh, stop and, uh, and, and go against and maybe find a way to communicate about it. I'm sure you can find a way I mean, it might sound opportunistic, but I think it might be by by uh, sharing this experience and you know saying, "Oh, we made this mistake because we didn't check that, or we worked with those people." You yeah. might avoid somebody else having the same same mistake. So I think, uh, yeah, we try to find a way to uh, to you use it, it not to what, lose everything because it's not, it's tough. Yeah. But uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't deal with it. No. So you would, would throw would, away. What would you do with the blood diamonds and the unethical gold? What would you do with it? Would you throw it away? Would you? What would you do with it? It's difficult. I, I mean, obviously, obviously, I would uh, because before we we embark in such a, a something, we we get some um, we 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 uh, we check that. So if somebody, if I'm purchasing from somebody who certifies, then I would go against them. Obviously, now if it's a mistake on 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 our side. I don't know. I would have to uh, to go after the person who is responsible. Mm. What if you internally make that internally, and, and if it means it's internally and we cannot get our money back, then we'll uh, we'll take the hit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Where did yeah, Ian yeah, go? Oh. Well, the dogs got him. <laughs> <I'm gonna lose. laughs> oh, okay. here it comes. Okay. The satellite okay. was down. Adam. Yeah. Child, the second last question. Well, no, yes, one more. All this right. is the, the last question, and then one more round. Okay, All here right. we go. Here we go. Paper, scissor, rock, shoot. All right. All right. Okay. A little more. Spinning again. Okay. Paper, scissor, rock, shoot. Oh, gotcha. I won. So, Adam. Adam, are you ready? I'm I was born ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Marketing versus rent. Which would which budget would you slash first? Ooh. Marketing. Uh, unfortunately, 
if I have a, a, a watch company or a concern, I, I need a place to make the watches and then hopefully the product can speak for itself. Also in terms of marketing though, there are lots of ways that you can do that. I think gorilla style, that's a little, there's more leeway there, shall we say. I think rent is rent. You know, your facility is your facility. And, and so that, honestly, I think I'd have to cut down on the marketing. Uh, but again, this is not a problem that I really have, so I have to speak uh, kind of uh, theoretically here. Uh, there's only one person who can really answer that question. Uh, he's the handsome fellow on yeah. the left of my screen. But yeah, I would throw a yeah, little I'd have to, thing in there and see how creative you get. And it actually says something. It says a lot about a person uh, when they, even if they're not, it's they think it's not relative to them. But you can always tell how a person is when they would rather slash, if, if they would slash rent or marketing, you can tell, even if they're not involved with either, what it tells me a lot about, it says a lot about you, Adam, to me, that you oh, said that. Well, I hope it says good things. That's but, good. Um, no. but at no. the end of the day, think about it. Yeah, well, no, there's, let's be honest, I've shown my two colors a million times already, so there's nothing I can do, uh, I think, to get back into the light. But yeah, you know, there, there are lots of ways that you can market these sure. days. And, and you know, this, this goes back to something recently and a question that was, was asked before in terms of, you know, a brand dealing with collectors versus retailers. And, uh, I recently just did an interview with uh, an, inter an individual who's a founder of a group called Collective Horology, uh, which is a, a Silicon Valley-based collectors group. And they recently did a lot of um, actually, I just wrote it up for Revolution as well. And so to me, it's an example of marketing yes, to a, a very large group of collectors. But I think that the message that comes out from that is much bigger. So even though you're only making X number of watches, Edward, and, and you have to be a member of the group to buy it. I can't even buy this watch if I want to because I'm not a member of the group. Um, I but you're still, yeah, you can't get one either. So, but yet, cover people have talked about it. And so not only is it shining a spotlight on this group, and yes, even though I run my own watch group, I think our two approaches are very different. As a matter of fact, we might be working together on some stuff down the road. I think that for a brand like Moser, it makes perfect sense because it's giving them a spotlight too. And it's also allowing people who maybe didn't look at the brand before to say, well, God damn, I love that watch. I also love the fact that they work with these guys. You know, this is not going to be a make or break moment for Moser, obviously, Edward, and, and you know, I I can't speak to numbers. I'm sure this is not something that's going to, you know, make you enough money to keep you going for the next 10, 20 years, but it's a project that uh, I think that, that it's larger, has a larger impact than what it might seem to have initially. So there's so many ways these days, and it's thanks to technology also that we can do this. I think in the past, that was a much harder question to answer. I think that marketing had more importance, traditional marketing, and it cost more. And so you really maybe had to kind of decide, well, do we cut down here or there just so that we can get that message out? So we're in an era now where we don't need all of that through through, I think. So it's it's interesting. But yeah, but I think that to me was a good example. I was genuinely Thank just trying to like Thank judge you, though, Adam, and garner a judgment on you. That's what I was doing with that question. So you never know. I mean, as we say, marketing, you never know what, what works and what doesn't. But I think we see it as a big puzzle and every single small piece counts. And yeah. of course, it's not, not going to change the, the, the world uh, for us, but it contributes to many new people discovering the brand. Also, one aspect of the brand, it's another collaboration with amazing people that bring something to us, to our brand. And I think the perception of the brand is a... Is a it's, it's not because you see one element that you understand it. It's it's a lot of different small things. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of them. And a lot of people came and, and, and loved. And I was surprised how many people talked about this collaboration. And I think it contributes. It contributes. It's like you're building a, a, a puzzle. It's one small piece, yeah. but it's, it's it's an important one like every other one. Thank you, Ed Wow, for that addition. But now Thanks, it's your And actually, this is the last question. Actually, last question of Rochambeau. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Ready. Oh, God. This is going to be a doozy. Yeah. yeah. Edward and Ian. Paper, scissor, rock, shoot. 
Oh, <laughs> the, stat, the status quo has been maintained. Wow. <laughs> well, that's okay because I got. I think I think he's hacked my computer. Yes, he has. He's engineered this I song. Like your brain. His advantage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He used his mind control. Yeah. Okay. Don't so, let him in. Don't let him in. Fight him. Yeah, like like uh, Professor X. Yeah. Hey, nice reference there, John. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What do you think the user, mm -mm, if you recall from... The pump and dumping panel. Did you watch pump and dumping 24K? Yes, you were there, I remember. There yes. was a user called mm -mm. For anyone, anyone else who didn't catch it, there was a user called mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Things on I know. The cat. Oh, you know that? Oh, yes, and he was. you were talking to him. You were chitzing with him. Okay. So, mm -mm made certain co several comments. And I will read them to you, Ian. Okay, okay, this he made the comments during the live chat. Some people addressed him, but the questions actually uh, I wanted to bring them up and see what you what you would answer to them in directly when asked directly. What he meant by these comments. What did what do you think the user mm -mm, meant by these comments? Boutiques and brand and why was he saying these things? Boutiques and brand managers are doing nothing to stiffen the flippers. That's the first comment. Did I repeat boutiques it? Boutiques and brands. Sorry. Boutiques and brands are doing nothing to what the flippers? Boutiques and brand managers are doing nothing to stiffen the flippers. That's a direct quote. Stiffen. Okay. Yes. Stiffen. Not inappropriate. Stiffen. The, Okay, so that's where I go. Yeah. The flippers. Did you get that? What that means, Ian? Stiffen the flippers. Um, to, I, I just stop them. To, to try to slow and stop down. the flippers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was one comment. The way the okay. brand and flippers are collaborating is ugly, and tarnishing the market. That's okay. a second. Third, wasn't that one of the purposes of Richemont acquiring WatchFinder as a buyback scheme and trade-in? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Then the ADs are not watching. From what I see and hear, is there a collaboration between the ADs? There is a collaboration between ADs and gray market sellers. All right, go. Okay. okay. I, do, oh, yes. I do not think, I do not think there's any collaboration whatsoever between anybody and flippers. Uh, you know, it, I, I think a retailer will sell to you know, either their best clients or if they've got a watch that's hard to sell, they might sell to someone that's flipping a watch. But I do not think there's any organized um, strategy in giving watches to flippers. Uh, I think any retailer, it's in their interest to look after their loyal customers that keep watches for longer first. Um, that, that said, unless it is in the interest of the retailer, in, in that long-term customers are, are better for them. Um, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with someone flipping. But once you've bought a watch, it, it's yours. You should be able to do what you like with it. Okay. I well also done. don't see any link between flipping and gray market. I think the gray market is only there because <coughs> the brands don't let retailers discount. Um, I don't think that has anything to do with flipping. It's inherently Okay, so that's your that full answer. That's your Am full I answer. The, um, there is also 
the way the brands and flippers are collaborating is ugly and tarnishing the market. So basically, your uh, your conclusion is that mm, is speaking a load of bombash. Yes, I think he is misinformed. Why do you think I he's think saying? His, I, d- I think his is question why. is barely adequate, but wrong. Okay, yeah. so misinformed. Adam, you can tell mm, that. You can tell them you're missing. I will certainly. And I have to say, I agree with everything that uh, Ian just said. I, I think if there's any collusion, it's it, it's not intentional, but it's a byproduct of a system that really uh, puts ads in a corner and st- sticks them with product that they have to move that they've paid for. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, this is a business. People need to make money uh, to feed themselves and, and to continue to grow their businesses. So. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I've always said that you know, I love what I do with respect to this industry and that the last thing I would ever want to be is a retailer, uh, you know, because of just how difficult it is and the barriers that are set up there. So I think the ones who are doing it right, you know, they are, but they're still, you know, they're, they're still between a rock and a hard place or between a rock and a scissor or however you want to say it. Oh, I just heard that. That was a good one. Yeah, see how we did that? That's that's my gift. But yeah, it's a, that's a tough. It's a tough one. No, but that was yeah. It's true. It, it was it was adequate. It was adequate. It was adequate. Adequate. Just like you know, all your answers though they surpassed uh, adequate. No, they I really enjoyed them, and thank you so so much for your Rochambeau contribution. Thank you for playing fair. Well, we tried. You all did. That was like a that was a little like question mark at the end of it, but no, a little eyebrow like tilt. But thank you so much, everyone. That was it. That's that was the last of us from book question. Oh, thank phew. you very much. Well, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure seeing all of you. And Michelle, it was a great, uh, a great joy.